Hi, uh, now we're going to show you uh, a couple of demos with uh, two-dimensional elastic collisions. So when we say two-dimensional elastic collision, we mean something that looks like this picture. You have a certain mass, M1, coming in with a certain initial velocity, hitting something else, and then they both go at a certain angle. The M1 goes this way, M2 goes this way, and then it's a certain angle. It depends on what angle they hit each other with, and uh, we're assuming the initial velocity of this is zero. If it is a perfectly elastic collision, then the kinetic energy of the system will be conserved. So the kinetic energy of the initial object will equal to the sum of the kinetic energies of the two objects. If the, kinetic, if the collision is not perfectly elastic, then the kinetic energy is lost a little bit. Uh, but in either situation, the momentum of the system is conserved. So this one transfers its momentum to this object in the x-direction, and the sum of the two momentums in the x-direction must equal to the momentum of this in the x-direction. So uh, the demo that kind of illustrates this is I have this uh, thing clamped, and I, I put it on a little incline, and it comes, it hits the the other ball here, in this case, there are different mass balls. So I could have a bigger mass ball here, a little marble. Uh, this one is a little bigger. This one is a little smaller. And you, you could, and the good thing with this demo is that you could either do the angle straight on, okay? So it's a more head-on collision and they go in the same direction. I can change the angle. And then now they went off at a different angle. So this is very important, especially if you're playing pool, right? You hit a ball, the one ball goes the one way, the other ball goes the other way. So depending on where you hit it, they both go in different directions. Uh, or I could change the, I could change the balls. I can have this one. Now, it's evident from there that this was actually the lighter one. Even though it is bigger, it's actually the lighter one. So notice what happens. When it hits it, it gets a backward kick. So it comes, hits it, this one goes forward, and it actually wants to go back. But because it's prevented from going back, so it, it hits that and then goes, goes forward. But behind it, there was something. But if, there wasn't, uh, if, there, if that thing wasn't there, it would have gone back. Now, one of the things that you could, we could actually prove here, we could actually test is, it can be shown from the theory that if the masses are the same, then these two angles are complementary. Okay? In other words, if one mass object hits another mass object equal length, and if this is initially not moving, the two go off on the side, and the sum of their angles are add up to 90. So we're going to try that. This time, I'm going to change the ball. Okay? And and the two balls are the same mass. I could change their angle, okay? And I could do a variety of angles. Now, let's try this, actually. I'm gonna take this paper. I'm gonna orient my paper roughly so that it is along the direction of the incoming ball. So the edge of it is along that direction. And I'm gonna put another piece of paper here. Then I'm gonna put a carbon here. Okay, so I'm gonna put carbon uh, on top of the two pieces of paper. Now I'm gonna have one of them sitting here, and then two equal mass balls, one of them is gonna come. And then let's see what we get on the piece of paper. Okay, it looks like we get this. And now if I extend this, they form a line, okay? So if we draw that line that we're getting, and then we draw this line that we're getting, it should more or less be perpendicular. If it is not, then that means it's not a perfectly elastic collision. It looks something like this. Uh, Okay, so you can see it's not perfectly perpendicular. It 
it's 70 degrees, okay? Angle was 70, which means that the collision was not perfectly elastic. It was semi-elastic. So if it had been perfectly elastic, what would have happened, what would have happened was that uh, if, if uh, this angle, let's say, had been 20 degrees, this would have been 70 degrees. So the sum of the two would have been, it would have been like this. And then the other one would have been like that. In other words, when two equal mass objects hit, when one of them get, experiences a glancing collision, the other one experiences a very strong collision uh, this way, so that the angle is uh, 90. Because in a sense, what happens is when this guy imparts most of its momentum to that, it has to go at an angle so that it doesn't have too much momentum in the x direction because this has most of its momentum, okay? But what if the two objects hit, and this is 45. Let's draw a better 45 here. 45. What's the angle of the other one going to be? Forty-five, right? In other words, it imparts. Think of it as if it imparts half of its momentum to that one, so that it's going at an angle, and then it will have half the momentum because they're the same mass. The angle between the two is going to be ninety. However, this will not apply if the collision is not perfectly elastic. If it's not perfectly elastic, you might get a certain variation. It might come, and it might be a smaller angle. Okay, the total angle might be 60, the total angle might be uh, 70, in which case it's, it's going a little bit slower, okay, and it doesn't impart all of its momentum to this one and it's, it retains a little bit more, so it could go at a little bit less angle, or it might even go backwards, so the variety of instances and things could happen. So as you can see in this one, since the angle was 70, we can get, uh, it was actually uh, semi-elastic. In the lab, we could do further investigations on this. Knowing that the angle is 70, we could do certain approximations and calculate what the percent loss of kinetic energy is. So we could find out how much of a semi-elastic collision this was. So as you can see, this was a pretty interesting lab to show you two-dimensional collisions and the whole concept of what happens when two things collide and go off at different angles. Thank you.